Okay. Well, I just want to extend my greetings to those who will be watching this on the streaming or they will uh, watch this at a later time. Um, and it's uploaded. I already greeted everyone in the room, and, and it's truly a, it's a Sabbath within, within the feast day, so it's a, 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 a double Sabbath. And it's a blessing to be here with Yahweh's people, um, to worship with Yahweh's people. One thing I, I do enjoy is uh, I haven't got to meet everyone yet, so if I still haven't met you, you know, don't be afraid to come up to me. Um, I'll try to get around to everybody. But uh, uh, like I said, it's a wonderful feast, a lot of new faces for me. And uh, it's just, it's a blessing to be able to fellowship with Yahweh's people. And one thing I, I do like is to be able to, for the ones that I have talked to, to talk to people who I can tell that when we're talking that they study the word of Yahweh. And, and uh, just from personal experience, that is, it's, it's really edifying for me. It's different when you go to uh, a feast, and I've been to those where everyone's just kind of going around like, well, what do you think? Well, I don't know, well, what do you think? And I don't know, I guess we'll find out when we get to service because there's just certain things about scriptures they don't know or they don't understand, and they figure that all the learning is gonna take place in the, in the service or during the services. And, uh, you know, but no, this, everyone here, we have a responsibility to study the word of God. We have a responsibility, you know, when, when, when Peter tells us in uh, 2 Peter 3.18 that we continue to grow in grace and knowledge of Yahshua Messiah, that only comes when we study the word. That only comes when we're reading, and then not only reading, but then doing and living it. You know, Peter tells us, and, and also Saul, don't just be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. How do people know that we're Yahweh's if we're not acting like his children, acting like his people, living their life? And so... I just want to tell you, I just feel blessed. And I, I feel blessed that every brother and sister that I've talked to, you, you can see it. I, I, and I hope you'll experience that same thing. You see that fire in their eye. You, you can hear it in their voice that they have an understanding and that they are still yearning more to understand more about our Creator and to continue to deepen and build their relationship with Yahweh Almighty. We have people who have triumphed. We have people that have grown. We people that had to overcome things, when you talk to them and you hear their journey, and you're like, wow, you, when, when you hear the journey of the brothers and sisters in this room, you know it was Yahweh's hand. Amen. This is just not accidents. These are not things that just, oh, it just all worked out. The things that we have, have witnessed, and when Yahweh puts his hand to physically protect us, when he's protect us, you know, emotionally and spiritually and how he's enabled people to make decisions and, you know, my, my mom sang and I, I remember that song from the time I was little. There's a lot of songs she used to sing to us and, you know, um, like I shared with uh, Brendan and them, you know, I, I attended my first feast before I was one year old. And I was seven, eight months when I went to my first feast. Um, and so the number of feasts always is more than my actual age. And, and, and I'm thankful for that. And I remember before my, uh, my brother Robert started driving that uh, my mom, she would drive to the feast and back with all of us in the car with her. Her. Because my dad didn't believe, so he didn't go. But you know, praise Yahweh, he didn't prevent her from serving and worshiping Yahweh. And, 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 you know, when you're a child, when you're younger, you know, really those, just kind of take that for granted. That, just, that was life. But as I'm older and older I get, the more I appreciate the blessing from Yahweh, even in that. And even more blessing, you know, we learn those songs because uh, almost out of self-preservation because we drive, you know, we lived up in Monterey, California, and, and for those that knew about worldwide, they had a big uh, piece of tabernacles in Pasadena. That's about a 300-mile drive. But for uh, a mother traveling by herself and, you know, the four of us in the car with her, and she'd be like, who chose I'm getting sleepy. Like, oh no, we don't want to go to sleep with Will. She's like, just sing with me. We, oh, we started singing. We didn't sing there and get her faith. We did not want her to. You know, faith is a good thing, but you know, this all says works. So we worked and, and made sure she stayed awake so we could make that trip. So those words stuck with us. And so, you know, and almost the words of Yahweh to, to stick with us and the words of Yahshua to stick with us. and. And, and as believers, that we don't become lax, that we don't become complacent, but we continue to walk on that journey, continue to walk to our Father. So let's read uh, 
We're going to start in the chapter 23 of Matthew. We're going to read some verses, and I know we're familiar, but he says some things that I really want to hone into. And um, had to change a few things. Uh, you know, um, Ted saw me making some more notes. He said, oh, you're redoing your message? I'm like, yeah. He said, why? Because I took all your scriptures? I'm like, well, no, but he, he did use some. The main thing, I just misplaced the notes. I have a bad habit of writing them on the back of a scrap sheet of paper, and when people clean up the scraps and stuff, I think they got tossed. So I had to go back through, but it enabled me to look into some other things, and, uh, and y'all willing that we all can be uplifted and edified in his word. So Matthew chapter 23, let's start in verse 1, because we have Yahshua speaking. And there's nothing like hearing from my master, and how I preach Yahshua Messiah. Matthew 23, verse 1, it says, Then Yahshua spoke to the crowd and his taught ones. Saying, the scribes and the Pharisees have sat down in Moses' seat. Then all things whatsoever, and I know a lot of verses that says they, but and it's it's you know when they found some um, writings that uh, I believe that he's speaking of he Moses, Moses yes. whatever Moses is saying as they read because he said they're reading the law of Moses, and we know he got that from the mouth of Yahweh. So whatever he tells you, keep keep and do. But do not do according to their, meaning the Pharisees' works, what they taught, and do not. We call that hypocrisy now. They speak and don't do it. For they bind heavy and, uh, uh, heavy and hard to bear burdens, and they lay them on the shoulders of men, but they do not desire to move them with their finger. And they do all their works to be seen by men, and they widen their templing, and they lengthen the uh, taglet, meaning you know, the tassels of their uh, uh, seat seats of their of their robes, and they love the cheap places of festivals and the cheap seats at the synagogue, and the greetings in the markets, and to be called by men Rabboni, Rabboni, but do not be called Rabboni. And that's more than just the rabbis, like you know, my master, like they were really elevating these people above them. He's going to be seeking to be called that. For one is your great one, the Messiah, and you are all brother. We are brethren before our master. And, and, and that's one thing I really uh, enjoy about this fellowship is we are all working and serving together. There's no one elevated or lifting up, or lifted up, I should say. And just like when, 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 um, when Bob was speaking, when you say kings and priests, and yes, that that priest, a lot of times we forget that, to serve, to be ministers, means to serve. Minister doesn't mean, oh, you get reserved parking and, and the seats up front, so everybody can see. We're here to serve and, and be brethren to one another and to, and to be there for one another. We'll read some more scriptures about that here in just a minute. So he says, uh, you are all brothers, verse 9, Matthew 23, verse 9, and call no one your father on earth, for one is your father, the one in heaven. No, be called master, for one is your master, the Messiah. But be, but I'm sorry, but he who is greater of you, let him be your servant. And whoever will exalt himself shall be humbled, and whoever will humble himself shall be exalted. Mm -hmm. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He just all right calls them that now. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven before men, but you do not enter, nor do you allow those entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour the houses of the widow and pray at length as a pretext. Because of this you receive more abundant judgment. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you go about the sea and dry land to make one proselyte, and when he has become so, you make him twofold more son of Gehenna than yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, whoever swears by the holy place, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the holy place, it is the debtor, he is a debtor. Fools and blind, for which is greater the gold or the holy place, the set-apart place that sanctifies the gold? And you say, whoever swears by the altar is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift on it, he is a debtor. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Then the one swearing by the altar swears by it and by all things on it. And the one swearing by the holy place swears by it and by the uh, one dwelling in it. And the one swearing by heaven swears by the throne of Yahweh and by the one sitting on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, but you pay tithe of mint and dill and cumin, and you have left aside the weightier matters of the law, of the Torah. And what are those weightier matters? Judgment and mercy and faith. And then faith is belief. Thoroughly convinced, fully persuaded, 
And these things were necessary for you to have done, and these things you should not have forgotten. He's not saying y'all do them. He said, but there are some more important things we need to be doing here. And it's Yahweh's people that we are to do these weightier matters. Not, yes, we, we took up an offering the first day, and then that was it. We, didn't, we don't pass a plate around every day. Fine, you be three times a year. We, we did it. It's there. Yahweh moved you um, to, to offer them. We offer, but there's, guess what? There are more important things that Yahweh holds as higher esteem, and that's this judgment, mercy, and faith. And what do those things mean? Because they're mentioned quite a bit throughout Scripture. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to read a few more verses. He says, Blind guy and straightened out of the gnat for swallowing the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup of the dish, but within they are full of extortion and iniquity. In our vernacular, to be more plain, it says that it's more than just about being looking good. It's more than just, I look how righteous I look. But it's about being righteous. It's about being set apart. It's not just, yeah, we separate, but are we set apart in our thoughts and actions as well? With this inward man, are we set apart unto Yahweh? Are we sanctified unto Him? Are we justified by Yeshua Messiah? Verse 26, blind Pharisee, blind Pharisees, first cleanse the inside of the cup and of the dish, that the outside of them may become clean also. Woe are you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, when you are like whitened graves or whitened sepulchres, which outwardly indeed appear beautiful, but within are full of bones of the dead and of all uncleanliness. So you also indeed outwardly appear righteous to men, but within are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the tombs of the righteous. And you say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. And Yeshua said, so you are witnesses to yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. I've heard people tell me that. I've heard people in, in, in this day and age say, well, if I had been around back then, I would have believed Really? Because I'm looking at what Yahshua said, and he said, guess what? You're the sons of those who did. I mean, you're acting just like them. We want to say how righteous and, and, and good we are, and, and we carry around contempt, and we are haughty, and, and we're arrogant. Yes, people of Yahweh can be arrogant. Some of us think we're holier than the rest. not to think like that. We're to ask and be set apart in Yahweh, but not at one time it's like, well, I don't know what's wrong with you down there. Because remember, Saul wrote, he says, we were once like that, but no longer, but we cannot forget the journey that we've taken to get here. I was encouraged. I've had numerous conversations. I've talked to a couple of brothers, I've talked to Chad and Brennan, and they're like, look, you know, I don't want others to have to take that same journey I took to get to this point. I'm trying to set that example so that they don't have to, to go through that. That's the, that's the mentality and attitude we're supposed to have to, to be those likes and examples and not just say, oh, what's wrong with you? But to walk in and say, I've been, I get it. Yes, uh, James. Um, I just wanted to point out something uh, in 23 9. Yes. When you were saying about. They call no man father. Yes. And if you grew up in Catholicism, that was the first thing. <laughs> if you grew up in Catholicism, that's the first thing they teach you is to call uh, the priest of Catholic Church mm -hmm. father. Right. And they don't use the Bible at all. So you think about it, if you use the Bible, they had their own manual. Mm -hmm. They picked out their own scripture, and how many scriptures there were was minimal. Mm -hmm. uh, so that just goes to show you why they don't use the Bible. And they make their own little manuals for, for their service. Right. Yeah. And, and it's a way of... of uh, Controlling. Co yes. Control and, and entrapping people. You know, I, I know Curtis was Catholic, and, and so was Raquel. And, you know, I, I work with a guy right now um, who's Catholic, and uh, he was like, a, you know, are you getting ready? You know, Christmas is going to be tough this year. I said, not for me. <laughs> I'm like, well, why? You know, you got all your shopping and everything done? I'm like, no, I don't celebrate it. He's like, 
you don't, you don't recognize the, the birth of the Messiah? And he said it like that, the birth of the Messiah. I said, we are told that we, are, we recognize his death, not his birth. He died for us. But yeah, I mean, it's nice to, to recognize his birth too. And I said, um, is it? What does scripture say about that? What does scripture say about this time? He says, oh, well, you know, we're, we're, we're not qualified. That's why I let the priest do it. We're not qualified to, to, to do. He literally said, we're not qualified to interpret and read and understand the Bible. That's what their job is. Where does it say that? <laughs> Where does it say that? Exactly. But once again, see, that it's that circular argument that if you are already said you're not qualified to read Scripture and understand it, then anytime someone questions you about anything that may or may not be in there, they would get to build an argument. Like, that's why you're not qualified. That's why I have that job and you're where you are. It's, 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 it's enslavement, it's, it's entrapping, and it's not just them, it's, it's others that are, that are in that way, because I've heard in this sentence. That's why we're the ministers, and you're out there hearing us speak. So we can break this down for you. And to your point, where is that? Because I'll show among the people that's, that's strong, and people that are looking towards him. And when you're reading this, and what he's saying about these, these scribes and Pharisees and how they're dealing with his people, there's an admonition. And then for them to say, well, if I'd been around back then, I would have listened to the prophets. He's like, no, because you're not listening to me. The ultimate. I'll read a couple more verses here. He says, so you witness to yourself that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. He says, and you fill up the measure of your fathers. That's a strong statement. And so when in, in 23, 23, when he's saying about you do all these things, but the way you matter is not, and I look at that for us, that we, you know, we focus just those three words, judgment, mercy, and faith, these characteristics of Yahweh, these things that Yahshua pointed out. So let's look into a couple of these things with judgment. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21, and we're starting probably verses, and let me get there, and I'll be the team. Proverbs 21, Proverbs 21, let's start in verse 2. Proverbs 21, starting in verse 2. It says, every, <clears throat> every way a man is upright in his own eyes. Isn't that something? That's true. But Yahweh weighs the heart. For Yahweh to do righteousness and justice is to be chosen more than sacrifice. And then we just hear about that and, and learn about that lesson about rebellion. And we say, well, I just need you to be obedient to me. Righteousness and justice more than sacrifice. Verse 4, Proverbs 21, 4. High eyes, a proud heart, and the flowering of the wicked is in the flowering of the wicked is sin. The plans of the diligent tend only to plenty, but those of every hasty one only to poverty. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vapor driven by those who seek death. Do we understand that? See, the, 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 those out there that are, you know, the bottom line is profit. The bottom line, I'll do anything to, that, to turn that bug and make money, which is, we see that in the world. And you all remember there was a, a what was it called? It was called Wall Street. Remember there's that, uh, that line when he said, greed is good? Yes. Wall Street? It was Wall Street, just Wall Street, yeah. But just that mentality, it was, oh, there was a movie, but... How many of us we see in this world, isn't that what's pushed? Mm -hmm. To get that next thing in, into a lying tongue, we do whatever it takes to get it. And for what? And see, and, and the thing about it is, I haven't heard not one person, if you watch an advertisement or you read in the newspaper or anywhere, I've never heard anyone say, I'm seeking death. Maybe you have, I haven't. The world is not actually say, saying that, but see, what they don't understand is when we don't have Yahweh in our life, if we don't understand what Scripture says and what Yahweh is about, that's what they're doing, and that's one of the tricks of the adversary, because we have to realize either we're seeking life, 
And David read that the other day in Deuteronomy 30. He said, you're either going to seek good in life or evil in death. If you're, we're not seeking good, we're seeking evil. If we're not seeking life, we're seeking death. There's no, there's no middle ground here. And I know we understand that because we're sitting here in this room, but what I don't want is for us, like I said, to be lax or, be, or lose our focus, to, to start compromising. Yes, it's, this is a great life to live in Yahweh. It's a great life to learn and understand it. And this is for all ages to be, um, like we were told the other day, to be bold in our walk. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean you've got to run out and stand in the middle of that intersection down there and stop traffic and tell them about that. But no, in your walk, in our walk, to understand what it is that we're doing. To understand why we are doing it. No one in this room would ask, like, where did you do this past week to say, well, I don't know, let me go back and, or here, let me show you this link and, and they can tell you. We all should have an answer. All of us. And we exemplify that in, in our children with those that are in the public school day. They're learning from that example. Yes. There's boldness in knowing the answer. There's boldness in knowing the answer, and there's confidence, and there's safety. When all mine, when they're in school, they understand that we don't do the holidays. They understand that we're, we'll be out, and then and they'll tell you, their teachers are like, isn't it time for you? Don't you usually leave this time of year? They start watching the time. And my wife, she kind of had to tell my daughter, because last year the kids were talking about Santa Claus, and my daughter's like, well, you know that's not true, right? <laughs> <laughs> and she wasn't trying to be mean, yeah. because it's just, it is the truth. This is what it is. And, and my wife didn't say, don't say that. She said, you know, you just watch how you say it, because for these kids, some of them, that's the first time they've heard that. And I don't know if you've seen, but it's, isn't it something how a lie would take root? And in the world, when you tell the truth, it devastates them. How's, why is the truth devastating? Why do we live in a society where you're told the truth and it cuts you like you're hurt? But that's nothing new either, because when you read in, in Acts chapter 7, isn't that what, when, when uh, Stephen was telling them the truth, weren't they cut? To the point that they, we got to get rid of this guy, and I'm here right now. And these are supposed to be the righteous. And that's what I want us to deal with, to deal in the truth and righteousness and what's right so that we don't, and, and, and we heard today, sometimes we got to receive the correction. Instead of acting like these people who want to kill Stephen, we need to be humble and be like, wow, thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. It may come from the children. Thank you. Instead of justifying it, right. And making excuses. There's nothing wrong with, with being different. I was different. There was a lot of young people in this room, and, 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 and you know, my brother came up worldwide. I know Laura, if you talk to her, she, she knows about worldwide. They had that Wild U program, and, and uh, you know, and I, I went to a public school, but guess what? I also kept the Sabbath. And you, and, and you know, it, it wasn't hard, but when you look at it, you see the face of the adults, and you're like, hey, coach, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be here Friday night. I'm not going to be here Saturday. And they're like, but we depend on you for sports. And when we moved from California to Louisiana, and, and you know, my mom's earning 80 bucks a week to take care of us. And, and you're getting recruited by these coaches. And so, of course, what do they do? They bring mom on the recruiting trip. And they're like, look at all this money that you can have if you were just playing. And they even said, just do it for right now. And then after you become rich and you retire, then you can go back to your religion. And just think of what kind of witness you'll be then. And I was like, yeah, I'll be with your shoe. That's how I read it, a hypocrite. <laughs> and everyone in that room would be like, so you sold out for money, and now you're back. And it's not even a guarantee that that would even work. 
And those are the examples we set for our children. And, 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 and then, you know, when, when they get older, and, you know, my, my daughter's sitting here, and that's one of the she's, she gets jobs, more jobs than anyone I know. Oh. Yes. <laughs> she'll get a job, and she'll be like, oh, I like this job, and oh, and then someone will come, I like the way you do. Literally, she had someone come to one of her jobs to recruit her from there to come to her job. But she tells them the, in the first sentence of their conversation, I keep the Sabbath, so I'm not going to be here on Saturdays. And there's not been one person that said, oh, that's a deal breaker. They're like, okay. See, because that's what Yahweh would do when we put him first. We're going to obey you first, and then whatever the chips may fall, and he, they fall on her face. We've got to, we have to get that example for them. Because I didn't know these people were going to come and, and recruit her for jobs. I'm not there that I can, we can be there and be like, you know, remember, remember we keep the Sabbath. I mean, you got to tell these people. But you know who is there? Yahweh. And when we remind each other about Yahweh and his presence in, in, in our lives, he reminds us. He keeps him at the forefront of our minds and our actions. So we can be those examples of those out there. We're still in Proverbs 21. Let's read uh, a couple more verses. Verse 7, he says, The violence of the wicked destroys them because they refuse to do justice. The way of a guilty man is perverted, but the pure, his way is upright. The upright, way of the upright is pure. Micah 6. I know a lot of us are familiar with this, so we just read a couple of verses. Micah 6, and I know some of y'all probably quoted from by heart, but I'm going to have to turn here. Micah 6, 6. If I can get there. And we'll just read a couple of verses. Micah 6, 6. Verse 6, Micah 6, verse 6, it says, With what shall I come before Yahweh to bow myself before the loftiness of my master, of my sovereign? Shall I come before him with birth offerings, with calves, sons of, uh, sons of a year? Will Yahweh be pleased with thousands of rams and with ten thousands of torrents of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, and for the sin of my soul? O oh man, he has declared to you what is good, and what does Yahweh require of you but to do justice and to love grace? And to walk humbly with your Elohim. He's asking that question. Is this what he requires of you? And that is. And you just think. Do we have these characteristics out there? Justice. And, 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 and grace. Or that loving kindness. And walking humbly. Are those characteristics that we see out in everyday life? I don't. But it should be. Characteristics that are evident within us, characteristics that we should continue to, to, to grow and, and expand in our lives, and that only comes through our Heavenly Father and, and continue our relationship with Him. John chapter 7. The book of John, chapter 7. And this is another wonderful passage, but I'm just going to kind of jump in the middle here. John 7, uh, chapter 7, and let's start around, let's start around verse 6, let's start at 16. John 7, verse 16. And it says, And Yahshua answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but of the one who sent me. He who desires to do his will can comprehend my teaching in the will of the Father. It is from Yahweh, or, it's from my, uh, or if from my own will, will I speak? He who speaks from his own mind seeks glory for himself. But he who seeks the honor or the esteem of he who sent him is true, and there is no iniquity in his heart. Has not Moses given to you the Torah, and not a man among you kept the Torah? Why do you seek or lust to heal me? Because remember, this is after Yeshua healed someone, and so Yeshua said to them, I did one work, 
and you all marvel. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped verse 20. In verse 20, they, they said, uh, you have a demon, who seeks to kill you? So now they're ashamed. They absolutely were trying to kill him. And so in verse 21, Yahshua said to them, I did one work, and you all marvel. Because of this, Moses gave circumcision to you. It was not because it was from him, Moses, but from the patriarchs. Yet you circumcise a man on the day of the Sabbath, uh, on the Sabbath. If a man is circumcised on the day of the Sabbath, it is so the Torah of Moses should not be loosened or broken. Why do you murmur against me? Because a man who was created whole, I have made whole on this day of the Sabbath. Do not judge by hypocrisy, or as a man judge, but rather judge with just judgment. That's what we are called to do, to look at things right and righteously as Yahweh looks at things. And not through the doctrines of men, and not through how people, by consensus, have think that that's how it should go. And, and, and like I said, I was, I was inspired, and, that, and I want that to continue. As, as you go out, and for those who haven't been out in fellowship, get fellowship with your brother. Hear how, you know, yes, some of them know each other, but some of them don't. But all the brothers from all the different places, and those who have not even known each other before now, have that, have that urgency and that love of truth. Second Thessalonians says that those people, they, they were turned away because they lost the love of the truth, and so therefore they would believe a lie. And here, when I, when I talk to the people, I'm seeing that love of Yahweh, that love of truth, because everyone's looking to Messiah. <clears throat> How can we grow and be better? And I want us to, to continue that. We've all come from different places and for a reason. And not because of the will of man, but for, for whatever reason, Yahweh has allowed us to be together in this place. And so when since we are here, let us be about his business. Let us continue to put him first. Let us joy, and, and, I, and I mentioned last time, and edify one another through his word. This is what that opportunity is for. I commend, you know, Kristen and, and, and Jamie, the young ladies. I, I know uh, the, the two Debbies and the, and the two Jans, Janice and Janet, they've been helping and, and, in the kitchen. And that, I commend that. And we appreciate it because, as you can tell, I, I like to eat. And it takes a lot to maintain this shape. But, you know, we're here to feast the Yahweh's work. And, and I'm going to do my part to, to help out in there, but I, I felt bad last night. You know, um, but I realized that I, I, I haven't been in there. I took out trash once. I'll be better. I'll help in there, and I, I looked in there, and then the kids made me embarrassed because I went in there, and man, those girls, they were like, fellas, y'all doing dishes. And the boys were washing dishes, and the girls were mechanic stuff and pulling stuff out. I'm like, what? Well, it's like a well known machine back there. <laughs> they had it together. But praise Yahweh, what are we doing now? We're all in here, and we're reading his word. And we're feasting on this word. So let's, let's continue to read some more words of Yahweh. First Corinthians 1. First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one, and let's pick it up in uh, verse twenty-four. We're still talking about this judgment. First Corinthians one, verse twenty-four says, "But to the called-out ones, both to the Jews or Judeans and to the Armenians, Messiah is the power of Yahweh and the wisdom of Yahweh." Because the foolish things of Yahweh is wiser than men, and the weak things of Yahweh stronger than men. Anything that men can come up with. For consider your own calling, brethren, that there are not many wise according to worldly things, nor mighty, not many of noble birth. But Yahweh chooses the foolish ones of the world that the wise might be put to shame. And Yahweh chooses the weak ones of the world so that he might put to shame the strong things. And he has chosen those of humble families in the world, and the lowly, and them who are insignificant, in order to belittle them to think themselves important. You know, when I was talking to Brennan last night, and, and this is an example of what we were talking about, if you look, you would say, wow, is he insulting us or is he exalting us? It sounds like he chooses the, the, the little and the insignificant. Are you calling me insignificant? Yeah, we're insignificant. 
See, that's the thing about but the, the home. We have to realize our place. In this vernacular, we have to know our land. <laughs> Yahweh has put us here, and he's put us in, and given us a purpose, and we accept that. Because here's the thing, brothers and sisters, Yahweh knows what he's doing. We're the ones that don't know. <laughs> we have brethren out here who are farmers. Do you think that they're going to put you in their expensive equipment and you've never seen he's like go out there and get a tractor what's a tractor you're right for the job <laughs> no he's gonna be like you know what i tell you what if you stay here grab this shovel yes yeah, here's a shovel <laughs> go dig a hole right. you, you can't mess that up <laughs> exactly and so that's what yahweh's doing what sense would it make the, the master planner the creator of the universe and everything in it and he's like yeah you who know nothing who i created you take over. No. He knows what he's doing. And he's saying, if you trust me, if you believe in me, then just follow and do what I ask you to do. And I will show you what I can do. I'll reveal it to you. And to all those people out there who think they're better, who think they've got it all figured out, they're going to see exactly that they don't. You know, you, you heard about Curtis when he's reading that whole thing with Sennacherib. You know, he, he, he read that in Chronicles, but you know, Sennacherib said something he shouldn't have said. He's like, and this Yahweh, who is he? If you read that letter that Hezekiah put before Yahweh, Yahweh said, yeah, and as far as him wanting to know who I am, I will show him. He would know. Not only him, but they will all know who I am. He said the same thing to Moses. Remember about the Egyptians? He said that they will know that I am Yahweh. And in, we, in, the, in the latter writings, we see that it says what? Every knee will bow down. Because, why? Because even the unbelievers, when Yeshua returns, all of a sudden people are going to know, oh, and I don't want us to be part of that group that's caught off guard and by surprise. Is he insulting us and bullying us? No, but he's showing that we have to be willing to be like him because didn't Yeshua empty himself? His scripture says he emptied himself. He became like us. So that we can understand, so he can understand our situation and show us that it can be done. That's why I said unless you become like little children, unless we become like those clean slates before him and, allow, and be his building, allow Yahweh to imprint on us and be his building, then we can truly be what he wants us to be. So verse 28 says, and, and uh, I'll read it again, he has chosen those of the humble families of the world and the lowly, and them who are insignificant in order to little them who think themselves important. Verse 29, when 1 Corinthians 1, 29, so that no flesh might boast in his presence. So we would be humble before him. But you also belong to him through Messiah Yahshua. Remember, we can't get to the Father except through the Son, who was made to us wisdom from Yahweh, both righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That comes to us repenting and walking in righteousness, so that even if it has been written, he that glorifies or boasts, let him boast in Yahweh. And even Jeremiah talked about that in Jeremiah 9. So Yahshua said, the way your matters, judgment. What was the next one? He said, mercy, right? Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. I know Romans 12 talks about the gifts. It's, it's a wonderful chapter. I really don't read the whole thing. Let's pick it up. In, um, he's talking about the different gifts. In verse 7, this gifts of information, uh, administration. Sorry about that. Verse 8. So let's start verse 8. Romans 12, verse 8. He says, Oh, the one's consoling and encouragement, the one giving with sincerity, and the one that rules with diligence, and the one showing mercy with cheerfulness. Showing mercy with cheerfulness. Verse 9. Let not your love be deceitful, Hate that which is evil. Hold fast that which is good. 
in brotherly love to one another, loving fervently, having gone before one another in, the, in honor, in diligence, not slothful, fervent in spirit, serving the master, in hope, in an expectation, rejoicing in affliction, enduring in prayer, steadfastly, continually, imparting to the needs of the saints, pursuing hospitality. And, I, and I, I'm seeing that on a physical level here with the, with the way that the brethren are reaching out and, and, and helping with one another. Let's continue in, these, in, these, in all these areas. Verse 13, imparting to the needs of the saints, pursuing hospitality. Verse 14, blessing those persecuting you. Bless and do not curse. Yeah, that's a little bit harder. Can we do that? Are we doing that? It's easy here. I look out and I see all these new brethren and sisters. I, I, I love y'all. It's easy here. Is it, real, is it as easy when you take a trip in Armour and, and you come across someone? Is it easy when you come across people who hate those that stand for righteousness? And you say anything and they're like, oh, you want it now. What, you mean someone that wants to do right? Someone wants to show love? Because I believe in scripture. To take love for hate? Can we still show love to them? Can we be like Stephen? You know, we mentioned him earlier in Acts. Who didn't die cursing, but what? Advocating, blessing those, and advocating for them with his dying breath. It, it takes. I'm not there. I still got to get there. <laughs> Continuing on, verse 15, rejoicing with rejoicing ones and weeping with weeping ones. Minding the same thing towards one another, mind not vain glory, but associate with those who are humble. Do not become wise within yourselves. We just read about that. Verse 17, returning evil for evil to no one, providing right things before all men, not just people you like. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with all men. Not avenging yourselves, beloved, but giving place to wrath, for it has been written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says Yahweh. Then if your enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him a drink. For doing this, you will heap coals of fire on your head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome the evil with the good. And that is hard to do when you are dealing with some people. You know, and, and for those who have heard me speak before, you, you, you heard me, you know, talk about my mom. You know, she's 89, so she came through an era where people didn't necessarily like her for no reason. She worked for a man who was so racist. But she took care of him. She took care of his wife. And he's from that hardcore old school where if you came in the house, you wouldn't get to go through the back door. That time. But see, you know how Yahweh works. When his wife died, who do you think he turned to for comfort? If you trust it. When his son was tragically killed in an accident, he was just devastated. Who do you think he went to because he said, God, I know if you pray for me, I feel better. I know you have some words for me from Scripture. And so much so that he only had two boys. He only had two children, two sons. And the oldest one was the one he had killed. So before he died, he had to get his youngest son, his youngest son's wife, and his grandson to go with him to the lawyer. And they had to serve as witnesses because he wanted to leave mom something in his will, and he knew, because he was so hardcore and so prejudiced and racist, that if he just went by himself, no one would have believed that he'd change his will. So he had to have witnesses to say, yes, he wasn't crazy, he wanted to do this. See, 
And I'm not saying that about her. I'm just saying a story that I know first had knowledge with. But I'm sharing this with you because I'm showing you this is what Yahweh can do. A hard heart like that? All the telling him you're wrong and this is not right and, and all this, that's not going to move him. Only Yahweh can change a heart like that. Only by walking in, 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 in righteousness can that have that type of effect on you. And I don't know everybody's walk, I don't know everybody's you know, journey, but if you're facing obstacles and things like that, what well, I'm telling you is continue on in that righteousness because Yahweh makes a way. And he can stop and change the hearts of anyone. And it's not for our glory, but for his. Because doesn't the scriptures say that men may see his good works and do what? Magnify the Father. And you know it's a shame because when he died at his funeral, even the preacher said, there's only going to be, he's only, you know, he's such a crass and, and, and pretty much evil man. The only way he came to church is when his wife died and when he died. That's the only way we're going to get him here. And when you found out how he was by mom and, and my family, by the way, he loved Odessa. He loved Mother Sister Benita. He, he helped them get to school when they were in college. He, he just did things and people were like, what is going on with this dude? Who is he? And even his own preacher said, but it had to be the Lord. <laughs> but we know that was what God did. So when we come across those things, all of us in whatever stage, whatever walk we are, whatever our age, continue on. Because Yahweh will bring us through. And just because we can't see to the other side doesn't mean there's not the other side. Just because we can't see a way out doesn't mean he's not going to part that sea and we come over on dry land. We see it when he reveals it. He reveals it in his time. We just have to do like Moses said. Be still. Be quiet. And see the salvation of Yahweh. And we see that salvation because that's who Yahshua is. He is the salvation of Yahweh. Look to Yahshua. Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm just going to read a couple of verses here. Let's start in verse 1 here. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Philippians 2, verse 1, it says, So then, if there is any comfort in the sight,